It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Teaching Tutorial Thursday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sportsbook app. I am Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, bunch of teams in my 20s, 2001 to 2008. It was very, very cool. Now, call a bunch of games, radio, TV, and I've got a bunch of podcasts like the Ross Tucker Football Podcast already recorded both parts one and two of the Fantasy Feast podcast this week with Joe Dolan, Even Money podcast where we continue to roll on with Steve Fezzik, and of course the College Draft podcast with the great Emery Hunt. We will get to my guy Greg Cosell momentarily. We'll have a new Spread the Word winner tomorrow. We'll have a new sponsor confirmation email winner tomorrow. Either winner can go ahead and claim one of these press passes I'm getting next week, like Bills Chiefs, which is awesome, Eagles Giants, or Mercer and Army. Three games for your boy next week. Really looking forward to it. By the way, how about Intern Sham? We got two interns now. Intern Sham posted all of the power rankings at our private Tuckheads Slack channel. So patreon.com slash RT Media. Not only do you become part of our family like David Mountford did recently, but you also get to see the Friday picks, the press box grades, all the even money bets, power rankings. It's all written down right there for you. It's beautiful. Almost as beautiful as talking to Greg Cosell every week. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, so there's lots to break (laughs) down always with Greg Cosell the executive producer of the NFL Matchup Show, as well as longtime NFL Films guru. You can check him out like I do on Twitter, at Greg Gosell. uh, Greg Gosell. And what's really cool is that this segment is presented by DraftKings because we're going to detail a bunch of the big matchups this week. You know that the DraftKings Sportsbook app is where you go then to place those wagers if you're allowed to. So pretty cool to get Greg's insight into those. I guess before we get to any specific games, though, Greg, I got to ask you about Ryan Tannehill because I think that there was several people, myself included probably, that wondered whether or not he could sustain the performance he had over the second half of last year if that was just kind of a fluky thing but so far, so good, Greg. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Ryan Tannehill was not a bad quarterback in Miami, Ross. Uh, you know that. I mean, the, the numbers were good. There were times he played really, really well. I thought he was always tough in the pocket. He was athletic and he could throw it. I think it's a really good mix of Tannehill's skill set and the offense that they want to run. This is an offense that starts with Derrick Henry. It's a base personnel offense. They play a lot. When everyone is there, they play a lot with uh, two tight ends. They play a lot with a fullback. Sometimes they play with three tight ends. Arthur Smith does a great job, the offensive coordinator, with uh, multiple formation looks from these different personnel packages. They're a very heavy play-action team with different play-action concepts. And we know play-action defines the reads and the throws for the quarterback. And then you add in Ten Hill's athleticism his ability to get outside the pocket by design, which they do, and his ability also to make plays with his legs uh, when he needs to improvise. So he has a very, very good skill set, and I think this offense really brings it out, and he's playing at a pretty high level. Somebody did a thing I saw on Twitter with his numbers over the whatever the number of games were that uh, they're almost exactly the same as Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I I heard someone mention that as well, which surprised me quite a bit. The other specific quarterback I want to ask you about before we dive into some of these matchups this week, it's Andy Dalton. Yeah, We all saw what happened to Dak Prescott and are thinking of him and hope he has a full recovery. Andy Dalton, I think a lot of people, Greg, 
have a sense of what he is. It's interesting. Some people really don't think favorably of Andy Dalton. Others do. What is he in your mind? I think he's a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Sorry, you know, just that that was the 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 movie airplane kind of reference there, you know? Yeah. Um, well, to make another reference from a Billy Joel song, I think a lot of people think he's been put on the back in a discount rack like another can of beans, you know, but he's he was a good quarterback in this league. Uh, there was a year not that long ago when he probably would have been the MVP if he didn't get hurt. What I think will happen, and this is pure speculation, which is all one can do at this point, is this is a team whose defense is not very good right now. And normally when your defense is not very good, the offensive approach tends to be that you want to play with some pace. You want to shorten the game so your defense does not play as many snaps because you need to, to play to your defense's weaknesses and limitations. So it would not surprise me to see them go back to handing the ball to Zeke, let Zeke be the foundation of the offense, and work off that. The temptation, because you have three really, really good receivers, is to toss the ball around the yard. And they certainly did that with Dak. Dak was playing at a high level. He's a really good quarterback. Um, but I, you have to think in terms of your entire team, Ross, and play complementary football. Interesting. Really interesting, Greg. Um, I wasn't sure. Well, look, I, none of us really know how they're going to go about it, what they're going to do. But I wasn't sure what you were thinking there. Let's dive in to some of these matchups. We're talking with Greg Cosell here on the Ross Tucker football podcast like we do every week. Let's start with uh, a game I'm intrigued by, Baltimore and Philadelphia. Really interesting, Greg, on multiple levels. Number one, you've got Philadelphia that kind of got the offense going last week for the first time, but the defense couldn't hold up their end of the bargain. Meanwhile, Baltimore, they've won by 14 and 20 four points the last two weeks. And when I go on on the radio in Baltimore, they ask me, what's wrong? What's going on? <laughs> well, this is a very challenging uh, game for the Eagles offense because the Ravens defense, it's different from the Steelers defense. The Ravens defense does many more things with their fronts and their pressure looks and their blitz packages. And this will be a real challenge for a Philly offensive line that's still playing guys who we're uncertain about. We don't know Lane Johnson's status. He's been in and out of the lineup. And they've had to play the rookie Jack Driscoll at right tackle, who does not look overmatched uh, physically, but he's not going to have seen a lot of what he's going to see this Sunday. Uh, then you still have Jordan Malata, the left tackle, who will be getting his third NFL start this week. And the Ravens really present challenges with how they dictate protections with their front looks and then break down what they've dictated. So it's very, very difficult. Carson Wentz threw the ball the best he's thrown it this season against Pittsburgh. He was aggressive. He made good throws. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I think Lamar Jackson has not thrown the ball as consistently this year, Ross, as he did a year ago. Uh, so uh, he did not run very much last week. I know that there's a lingering knee injury, which they're downplaying. Whether he has it this week or not, who can say? It would, if he's fine, it would not surprise me to see them get back to using him on in the run game significantly because historically, Jim Schwartz, with the Eagles anyway, the defense has uh, – they kind of line up and play. So I'll be very interested to see if Jim Schwartz makes some adjustments or if he just lines up and plays. And if he does, I think you'll see the run game of Baltimore be a factor. Uh, very intrigued by that matchup. And I, I'm, you know, Lamar Jackson, two carries for three yards. I mean, I can't remember the last time you saw that. So you got to think that the knee was a factor for him last week against the Bengals. We'll see if it's still a factor for him against the Philadelphia Eagles. Another game that I want to talk to you about in the early window, how about the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers, Greg? fascinated by this matchup on a lot of different levels well you know it's funny cleveland's four and one and obviously they're you know the dog pound i'm sure is thrilled it's it's been a while since they've been four and one um 
they're an interesting team offensively because and and I just watched Baker Mayfield. That was actually the last thing I watched last night before I went home. So it's fresh in my mind. Quite honestly, Ross, he's not playing very well at all. I know they're four and one, but he is not playing really well. He is playing so fast right now, mentally and physically. He's overstriding. He's sailing fastballs too high. Uh, he needs to slow down his body. He needs to slow down his mind. Uh, he's a really good thrower of the football. He can make really, really good throws. And I think Kevin Stefanski does an outstanding job with play concepts, play design, wrinkles off basic concepts. That's what good coaches do because, as we've said many times, there's not a thousand route concepts. It's how you get to the, the route concepts and the little wrinkles off of them. And Kevin Stefanski, I think, is doing a great job with that. But I think Baker Mayfield, who I believe is very, very talented, just needs to slow down his entire process. He is playing very fast. Wow, that's interesting, Greg. I haven't heard other people really saying that very much. On the other side, you know, Chase Claypool, it feels like this is the second year in a row, Greg. DK Metcalf last year, Chase Claypool this year. Yeah. Were a really big, really fast, really physical receiver. Didn't go until later in the second round because they couldn't run all the routes or people didn't think they could get the requisite separation on certain routes. I don't know who that kid will be next year, Greg, but I am all in on the big fast dude next year in the draft. I can tell you that <laughs> right now. Well, so far, and again, it's a small sample size, but so far, I guess I was wrong on Claypool. I think he looks leaner than he did when I watched him at Notre Dame. Because at Notre Dame, to be honest, I thought he would be a big tight end type player. Uh, and, you know, one of those guys who was a tight end who you could flex out and, and be really effective in that role. Um, I don't know what his weight is now. I know at the combine he was 238. He looks thinner to me. But like I said, hey, I'd be happy to be wrong because I love when I see these young kids come in and play really, really well. But he looks like an explosive athlete, no question. Uh, you know, and very much like Metcalf, he's used on particular routes, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a limitation, as some people say. That's just using a player to what his strength is um, and making sure that his limitations are totally camouflaged. That's good coaching. Uh, but he looks like a big, fast, explosive athlete right now. We'll see. I'm sure they'll continue to use him more. This was a really good game to use him against Philly. Because other than Darius Slay, I think their secondary clearly is it, – it's kind of been reworked. Jalen Mills is playing corner, and that's not what they had in mind. All right, the late game has a big-time featured game, Greg. I'm sure you guys have been and will be all over it. Talking, of course, with Greg Cosell, the NFL Films guru here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It's the Bucks. It's the Packers. It's Brady versus <clears throat> Rodgers. What will you be looking for? Well, I think the Green Bay offense to me has become really fascinating with what they, they do. Uh, more motion, play action. I think Aaron Rodgers is playing really, really good football. Uh, and, and I think that you see him playing very comfortably within the structure of Matt LaFleur's offense. Uh, and and I think when you see that, it, there's just a rhythm to it. Uh, and, and I think... We all can kind of see with our naked eyes, Ross, and you know, you do games, you've been doing this now for quite a while. You can see when an offense has a rhythm to it. The Packers offense has a clear rhythm. You know, another offense that's very much like that, that's not talked about much at all, and I really enjoy watching them every week on tape, is the Rams offense. When the, these offenses have such a nice feel and a nice rhythm, they use the play action pass game, they use motion. They do things that change the strength of defenses and make it more difficult for defenses as the ball snapped. Little things, little tweaks, you know, and it's it, it's really fun to watch. But no, but that game, the Packers Bucks game, is a really intriguing game. The Bucks do have a good defense. Yeah, I can't wait to watch that matchup. Uh, obviously, that's there's only two in the late window, so most people will be watching that one for sure. What about Greg? The Carolina Panthers. I just uh, need to get your thoughts. They're playing the Chicago <laughs> Bears. They've won three in a row. I didn't know if they'd win four or five games all year, Greg. But Teddy Bridgewater and these receivers, and even Mike Davis, I mean, everybody's putting up numbers. 
Yeah, you know, Teddy with his gloves, Teddy two gloves. He's playing really, really well. I think Joe Brady is the OC there. He was, of course, at LSU last year. They have done a phenomenal job against zone defense. Brady does an unbelievable job with high-low concepts, with levels concepts, routes at different levels to attack zones. And Bridgewater is very, very efficient. He's a quick decision maker. He knows where to go with the football. There's a toughness and competitiveness to his game. He's been consistently accurate. Uh, He's playing really, really well. And they've got a very good receiving core. Uh, And he's also, while he's not a power thrower who's going to stick it in tight windows on a regular basis, he is more than willing to throw to the one-on-ones on the outside. And you have to do that in this league. And you mentioned Mike Davis. He's a fun guy to watch run. That guy runs like every run is his last run in the league. And he probably feels that way because he's been with so many teams. But he runs hard. He runs with velocity. He runs with power. He's got terrific contact balance. He's not explosive. He won't break a 60-yarder. But he is a tough, physical, sustaining grinder. And if you have to line up Mike Davis, you're okay. Yeah, I mean – there's a lot of teams that have cut him that could have used him the way he's playing right now. What about the game I'll be at Monday, I guess, afternoon, Monday, early evening, 5 p.m. Eastern time game on Monday. You've got both the Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills coming off their first losses of the season. Yep. And Reed versus Sean McDermott. What will you be looking for there? You know, what fasc- fascinates me about this game is we know Mahomes is great. We know Josh Allen's having a really, really good season and will likely be a really good quarterback as his career develops. But, you know, one of the things, and this is what we do on the matchup show, you know, when you watch the tape, you see things. And both quarterbacks this season have been really, really good against man coverage and at times have struggled against zone. And, you know, when you play against zone, the you're kind of forced to read through it and find the windows. And, you know, I think that we saw that on Monday night with Josh Allen. He'd been phenomenal this year versus man. And the Titans came out with a very zone heavy approach and, you know, forced him to read through it, find the voids. Then you get, you you force a quarterback to go a little late in the down in the pocket. And, you know, Josh did not play poorly by the way, but it just, it's not as, defined as it is against man where you just pick out your man matchup with Mahomes you know he's always going to throw for a ton of yards he's special he's truly special and he'll always make great throws but that's not the point the point is defenses still have the game plan to play against them Ross we know that they don't go into a game and say oh Mahomes is great you know he's going to throw for 350 we lose that's not the way it works so how do you game plan and there have been a number of games this year where there have been some struggles for Mahomes in that offense, and it's predominantly been against zone. The Chargers gave them a little bit of a problem. The Patriots, the Raiders this past week played zone with great discipline. So you have to decide how you want to play. And I'm not saying that now there's a blueprint. Hey, these are great coaches and great quarterbacks, but you have to decide how you want to play where you think you can minimize what they do. His name is Greg Cosell. You got to check him out on social media at Greg Cosell. He joins us every Thursday here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, breaking it down like nobody else can. Greg, thank you so much for the time as always. All right, Ross, thanks. It is our pleasure. It is also our pleasure to tell you about the new normal, the uniform that has a lot of us searching our closets and drawers for men's essentials. Instead of the usual business casual button-up and jeans, it's soft-knit polos, tees, joggers, active shorts, whatever it is, they got it at Mack Weldon. You guys know I've gotten several button-downs from Mack Weldon. I've gotten several polo shirts from Mack Weldon, Um, mainly white. I I like the crisp, clean white. goes with some of my fancy shorts that I wear. Weldon Blue, totally free loyalty program. Level one gets you free shipping for life. Once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. Plus, they want you to be comfortable, so they've got a guarantee. If you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it. 
and they'll still refund you, no questions asked. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Tucker and enter promo code Tucker. That's MacWeldon, W-E-L-D-O-N dot com slash Tucker, promo code Tucker for 20% off. Mac Weldon, reinventing men's basics. Tuck Stakes. Morning, Ross. Let's start today with both the Falcons and the Panthers going into the intensive COVID protocol after a Falcons D tackle. Marlon Davidson was placed on the COVID list. That's the new deal, I guess. Somebody test positive. Anyone that they have a new formula and anyone that was a close contact of his has to be out for five days. That's mandatory is my understanding of it. So, you know, now remember a close contact is someone that's within six feet of you for 15 straight minutes. So we'll see if anyone qualifies for both the Falcons or the Panthers, but I think they both shut down their facilities today as they're sorting through the contact tracing. It's a new world in the NFL there. Tuck Stakes. Speaking of COVID, Alabama head coach Nick Saban tested positive. Right. So we talk mainly about pro football here on the Ross Tucker football podcast. We save the college stuff primarily for the college draft podcast. All right. Then let me interrupt and just say former Dolphins head coach Nick Saban tested positive. Let's keep it with, with the NFL then. Wow, Brian, that was really necessary by you there. That was really creative and tricky and wow, providing value. Anyway, I'm not going to be the Alabama head coach, okay? I'm not. Um, and then he is. So as for Saban, the only reason why I mention this is it just seems like there are still some people out there that think, ah, I won't, I won't get it or I'm fine. You know, if someone like Saban's getting it with, you know, trying to do the things right so he doesn't get it, so he can stay with his team and coach against George on Saturday, then anybody can get it. And I've seen other people have quotes about that. You really got to keep your guard up because, you know, certain people, if the president can get it and Nick Saban can get it, then anybody can get it. Tux takes. Other news today includes Kamala Correa being traded from Tennessee to Jacksonville. Bears guard James Daniels and Path Panthers D tackle Kawan Short going on IR and Broncos running back Melvin Gordon getting arrested for a DUI. So Vic Fangio, the Broncos head coach, said there will be some discipline for Melvin Gordon. I don't know what that will be or when. But he said there will be some discipline for Melvin Gordon. As for short, second year in a row, he's going on IR with the shoulder surgery. That's that's not real good. And he's a guy that they had a pretty good D-line going with Burns and Gross Matos and Brown and short. Those guys were getting after it. So that's a loss for them. Uh, the Bears losing Daniels hurts. And Correa just wasn't playing. For Tennessee, he asked for a trade. They were going to just release him, and then the Jags said, "No, we'll take him." They swapped sixth and seventh round picks. So there's, you know, there's an example of a guy going from a team that's really good to a team that stinks because he knows that's what's best for his personal career to make as much money as he can for his family because that's the real team he's on, his family's team. Tux takes. Let's talk about the Pro Bowl. The NFL announced yesterday that they're going to reimagine the Pro Bowl this year with assorted activities instead of playing an actual game. You know, when the, I hear reimagine, I just think of that imagine all the people living like the. Uh, 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 you may say, I'm a dreamer. Dun, dun, dun. But I'm not the only one. Who sings that, Bri? John Lennon. John Lennon? Who do you think's better, me or John Lennon? John Lennon. Even in his current state, I think he's better than you. Imagine all. By the way, that is like that was an amazing meeting at the NFL. When they sat there and they said, hey, we got to get rid of the Pro Bowl, like 
A, we might need that extra week for COVID, and B, we're not bringing all of our best players together to play a meaningless game and have people getting COVID. That doesn't make sense. But we still want people to watch whatever we do that weekend because we get 12 million people that watch it usually. What should we say? Why don't we say we're reimagining it? Oh, love it. Love it. Put that in the press release. We are reimagining the Pro Bowl this year, which is an effective way of saying they're canceling it. But I I'll, I can't wait to see the assorted activities they come up with. I want to go back to like the quarterback challenge, see which quarterback can throw it the furthest, stuff like that. Even that they don't want to do these days, though, because you think you're afraid you're bl- you'll throw out your arm or whatever. You know what I don't mention enough, Brian? Before we get to an email, I do not mention enough on our homepage at RossTucker.com the Amazon buttons that we have there. You click on the Amazon button, it takes you to a landing page, and then anytime you make a purchase through there, they know that we sent you and we get a little something. It's really, really little these days, but hey, if you're going to buy stuff on Amazon for your business or your family anyway, that's a cool way to support us. And then anytime you have that purchase come through, forward it to me, Ross at RossTucker.com and ask me any question you would like. So when you get a chance, go to RossTucker.com for UK, Canada, US, Boom, hit the Amazon button, and we really appreciate it. Let's get to an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's your chance. It's time to ask Ross. So the email address I just mentioned, it's ross at rosstucker.com. If you ever take advantage of any of our sponsors, you can ask me any question you like. I've got some awesome press passes coming up, so take advantage of a sponsor, Forward it to me. Maybe it's Mac Weldon. Maybe it's Lightstream from the Fantasy Feast podcast yesterday. So, or maybe that was today. I can't remember. Anyway, then ask me any question you like. I love your questions. Love, love, love. What do you got, Brian? Hey, Ross. Question, uh, two questions here. First one, why is Clark Harris a Pro Bowl long snapper? How does he achieve that level? Is it strictly talent? Is it opportunity, like more snaps than a better team since the Bengals are always punting? Is it fundamental, such as technique, footwork, etc.? So why is he so good, and what makes lawn snapping different from playing the center position? Then question number two about Mike Kosicki. How is he being schemed in the offense, and are they utilizing his talents like the coaches should? Was his poor rookie year a lack of opportunity or trust? Was he lining up improperly or making mental errors? It seems like for the last eight to ten games, Mike has really rounded a corner. Now, how much of that is coaching and scheme? And how much of that is Mike making strides? That is from Anthony. Good questions, Anthony. Really good questions. Um, And Anthony is from the Shore area in New Jersey, which is where both Clark Harris and Mike Kosicki are from. So I think that's why Anthony is specifically asking about a couple guys I think he knows or he knows their families. I got to be honest with you, Anthony. I don't know what the deal is with the Pro Bowl long snapper. I don't I don't ever remember voting on that. It was just kind of assigned by the head coach that year. So I, I don't know if they actually vote on the on the Pro Bowl long snapper. Maybe they do, but I don't remember ever ever voting that or talking about that. And it seems like they switch who it is a lot, which would lead you to believe that it's not really necessarily the best guy. I don't know. That might be one I have to look up. But, you know, it would be like the a guy would be a five-time Pro Bowl long snapper, I think, if he was the best one. But I think they switch it each year. If I'm wrong, you guys can call me out on social media. I might be wrong. I'm, I'm admitting it. But I would imagine, like anything else, it's just he's more proficient at his craft. Like anybody with a skill, a golfer, or a hitter in baseball who bats a higher percentage or a, ba- or a pitcher or whatever – I would imagine that Clark Harris, his snaps are on the money more often with more velocity, although most of those guys rarely mess up, which is why I think it's kind of hard for them to say, okay, this guy's the the Pro Bowl. He's better. I I don't know. As for Gesicki, you know, I think there was a couple things there. I I think, number one, um, I do think he was having some issues. There were some mental errors. Number two, He's not very physical, 
you know, he's strictly a pass catcher. And I think sometimes that frustrates coaches and they just have to figure out what he is, which is Mike Kosicki is essentially a big receiver. He doesn't have a lot of interest in blocking. That kind of goes back to his days at Penn State as well. Shout outs go to Pizza Boy Brewing, DynastyFreaks.com, Sportaculture, SteakhouseSports.com, Vision Comics with an X. Remember, both episodes of the Fantasy Feast podcast have posted, so certainly go ahead and check that out when you get a chance. Make sure you're all set. Plus, it's kind of like Even Money Podcast, just a cool different way to look at these games and from a different perspective. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.